It's truly amazing how much goes on behind the scenes before we even get to see a beautiful flower. Just like with people, there are so many changes and developments that happen within a plant before it can bring forth new life in the form of a flower. And it's not just about creating something pretty to look at the plant has a specific purpose when it produces its flowers. The stamen and pistil are crucial parts of the flower that work together to make sure that the plant can reproduce and continue to thrive. It's truly a marvel of nature how everything comes together to create something so beautiful and essential to the survival of the plant. In this video we will learn one of the important parts of the flower that is stamen in detail. The Structure of Stamen If you look at figure, you'll see a typical stamen. It is the male reproductive organ of a flower, which has two parts. The first part is a long and skinny stem called the filament. The second part is called the anther, which is located at the top of the filament and usually looks like it has two parts. The bottom of the filament is attached to either the thalamus or the petal of the flower. The number and length of stamens can be different in flowers from different types of plants. If you were to take a single stamen from 10 different flowers and put them on a slide, you'd see that they can be different sizes. If you looked at each stamen carefully under a microscope and drew pictures of them, you'd see that they also have different shapes and ways of attaching to the flower. An angiosperm anther is a part of the flower that helps make pollen. It's usually split into two parts, which are each made up of two little sacs called theca or dithecus as a whole. These two parts are called bilobed. You can see a groove that runs down the middle of the anther. If you cut the anther in half, you'll see how it's organized and the different types of tissue that make it up. The anther looks like a four-sided, tetragonal, shape with four microsporangia at the corners, which are structures that make pollen. There are two microsporangia in each part of the anther. The microsporangia, little sacs, in the flower develop and turn into pollen sacs. These pollen sacs run from one end of the anther to the other and are filled with pollen grains. So, these little sacs are really important to study to understand the structure of stamen from inside. Structure of Microsporangium Microsporangia are tiny structures found in flowers that give rise to pollen grains. If you were to take a cross-section of a typical microsporangium, you would see that it appears nearly circular in outline and is surrounded by four wall layers. Each wall layer has a different job. The outer three protect the microsporangium and help it open up to release the pollen. The outermost layer is called the epidermis, which provides a protective covering to the microsporangium. The next layer is called the endothesium, which helps in the dehiscence, splitting open, of the anther to release the pollen grains. The middle layers provide additional protection to the microsporangium. The innermost wall layer is called the tapetum, and it's like a personal chef for the developing pollen grains, providing them with all the nutrients they need to grow and mature. Interestingly, the tapetum cells usually have more than one nucleus, which is kind of like having multiple chefs in the kitchen. When the microsporangium is young, it's filled with a bunch of tiny cells called the sporogenous tissue, which will eventually turn into the pollen grains we see later on in the process of microsporogenesis. Overall, the structure of the microsporangium is designed to protect and nourish the developing pollen grains, ensuring that they are healthy and viable for fertilization. Microsporogenesis Now moving towards the process of pollen formation, we need to understand the process of microsporogenesis which eventually leads to the formation of pollen grains. When a flower is developing, it undergoes several changes that eventually lead to the formation of the male and female reproductive structures. In the case of male structures, the anther, which is part of the stamen, plays a crucial role. The anther contains the microsporangia, which are responsible for producing pollen grains that we just studied. The process of formation of microspores from a pollen mother cell, PMC, through meiosis is called microsporogenesis. Microsporogenesis is the process by which the male sex cells of plants, called pollen grains, are formed. 
It all starts with cells called sporogenous tissue that are located in the anthers of flowers. The cells of the sporogenous tissue undergo meiotic divisions, which is a type of cell division that results in four cells, each with half the number of chromosomes, as the original cell. These four cells are arranged in a group called a microspore tetrad. These cells are also known as pollen mother cells, PMC, and each one has the potential to form a pollen grain. As the anther reaches maturity, the microspores separate and transform into pollen grains. These pollen grains are eventually discharged when the anther splits open. A large number of pollen grains can be produced in each microsporangium. As the microspores develop, they experience several transformations such as the creation of a tough outer layer called the exine. This exine is composed of sporopollenin, a substance that provides protection to the pollen grain against harm. Once the pollen grain is mature, it is released from the anther and can be transported to the stigma of a flower. So the next time you see a flower, Take a moment to appreciate the complex processes that are taking place behind the scenes to produce the pollen grains that play a crucial role in plant reproduction. Now students, to make your preparation easy and complete, you should definitely check out the notes on microsporogenesis. And guess what? You can find all of the chapter notes you need in great detail on Edurev. Pollen Grains Now. Let's talk about the pollen grains in detail. Pollen grains are like tiny powdery particles that represent the male part of a plant's reproductive system. You can actually see these pollen grains by touching the opened anthers of a flower and finding the yellowish powder on your fingers. If you look at them under a microscope, you'll see that they come in all sorts of sizes, shapes, and colors. The pollen grains are generally round and range from 25 to 50 micrometers in diameter. The exine layer, which is made up of a super strong organic material called sporopollenin, which we already know is one of the toughest organic materials known. This material is so tough that it can withstand high temperatures and strong acids and alkalis. The exine also has special little holes called germ pores, which are important for the pollen grain's development as it is a region of the exine where sporopollenin is absent and this small opening in the exine allows the pollen tube to grow out of the pollen grain. One really cool thing about pollen grains is that they can be well preserved as fossils because of the presence of sporopollenin. Scientists can actually look at these fossils to learn about what plant species existed in the past. Additionally, the exine of pollen grains has a variety of patterns and designs, making them beautiful to look at. Exine also serves to protect the delicate inner parts of the pollen grain from various environmental stressors, such as UV radiation, desiccation, and attacks from herbivores and pathogens. The presence of sporopollenin allows pollen grains to survive for hundreds and thousands of years and become well preserved as fossils. Vegetative and generative cells. The inner wall of the pollen grain is called the intine. It is thin and made up of cellulose and pectin. The cytoplasm of the pollen grain is surrounded by a plasma membrane. When the pollen grain is mature, it contains two cells, the vegetative cell and the generative cell. The vegetative cell is bigger and has a large irregularly shaped nucleus as well as abundant food reserves. The generative cell is smaller and floats in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell. It is spindle-shaped with dense cytoplasm and a nucleus. In over 60% of angiosperms, pollen grains are shed at this two-cell stage. In the remaining species, the generative cell divides mitotically to give rise to the two male gametes before pollen grains are shed, which is called the three-cell stage. Allergies by pollen grains Pollen from many plants can cause allergies and respiratory problems for some people, including conditions like asthma and bronchitis. One plant, called parthenium or carrot grass, was accidentally brought to India with imported wheat and has become very common there, causing pollen allergies for many people. Nutrients from pollen grains Pollen grains contain a lot of nutrients 
and some people take pollen tablets as a food supplement. In Western countries, many pollen products in the form of tablets and syrups are available in the market. People believe that consuming pollen can increase the performance of athletes and race horses. Lifespan of Pollen Grains It's fascinating to learn that pollen grains have a limited lifespan after they are shed. The period for which pollen grains remain viable varies depending on various factors such as temperature and humidity. For instance, in some cereals like rice and wheat, pollen grains lose their viability within just 30 minutes of release. However, in certain members of Rosaceae, Leguminosae, and Solanaceae families, pollen grains can maintain their viability for months. Interestingly, just like how we can store semen and sperms for artificial insemination, it is possible to store pollen grains for many years in liquid nitrogen at a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. This method of storing pollen grains is useful in creating pollen banks, which are similar to seed banks. These pollen banks can be used in crop breeding programs to enhance the genetic diversity of crop plants and develop new varieties with desired traits. We hope that you have understood the topic. Now, here is a secret on how you can study effectively with the EduRiv app. You can learn with chapter notes, watch video lectures, and solve NCRT-based MCQ tests of this chapter on EduRiv. And that's not all, you also get amazing courses for class 11 and 12 biology, and much more for your NEET preparation. Thank you.